Welcome back to the channel and to our Volkswagen diesel powered Chevy S10 pickup truck project. If you're new to the channel, well, this truck has a normally aspirated 1.6 liter diesel engine that was salvaged from a 1985 Volkswagen Golf. The little diesel engine generates a mere 54 horse ponies on a good day and about 73 pounds feet of torque at 2200 RPM. Eh, not a lot going on under the hood, that's for sure. Today, we're finally going to be doing our first fuel economy test on this rig, and it'll be interesting to see how it does. Before we get started, let me explain how we're going to conduct this test. Okay, just for fun, I prepared a cartoon. Now, this is not AI generated. Instead, it's a half-ass cartoon done with clip art and by a real human that's fueled by caffeine. So doing a fuel economy test on this truck at this point in the build is going to take some effort. You see, we're still sorting a few things out. Anyway, instead of filling the tank up and driving a few hundred miles, we are going to be a little bit more scientific kit to to sci sciency. And to do that, we're going to weigh the fuel before and after the test. Then we can calculate how much fuel was used. First, we're going to drain the fuel tank via the return line from the tank and we'll pump it into this container. At that point, we can weigh the container and make a note of how much it weighs. Then we'll put the fuel back into the tank. Easy peasy, except we do have a slight issue. And that is, the scale that we're using to weigh the fuel can only handle 16,000 grams, which works out to be a little bit less than 5 US gallons or around 19 metric liters. Actually, it's a little bit less when you factor in the weight of the container. Since I have no idea what kind of fuel economy to expect, we're going to limit today's adventure to around 40 miles. That's a safe distance to go without the fear of running the tank dry. Anyway, the plan is to take the truck on the rural back roads and accumulate the miles at the target speed of around 55 miles per hour, which is also the local speed limit. When we're done with the road test, then we'll drain the fuel and at that point we can weigh the remaining fuel and calculate the fuel economy. This method is extremely accurate for short distances. So just like in the cartoon, right now we're pumping out the fuel tank, and when we're done with that, we'll adjust the amount of fuel that we put back in the truck to be a little bit less than 16,000 grams. Fast forward a little bit, and now I'm dumping exactly 15,590 grams into the fuel tank. It sounds like a lot, but it's only about 4.8 US gallons. So apparently the fuel gauge doesn't work. The gauge reads the same no matter how much fuel's in the tank. That's a problem for future Jimbo. He likes dealing with electrical problems. In other news, well, the speedometer works, which is great news. However, the odometer doesn't seem to work. So we're going to have to keep track of the distance traveled with this GPS gizmo. For this fuel economy test, the tires were inflated to 35 PSI. Of course, the higher the pressure, the less rolling resistance. And 35 PSI really isn't much, but it's a realistic number. And I want to keep this test as realistic as possible. I just don't see a reason to artificially boost the fuel economy by doing tricks when I'm looking for real world numbers on a pickup truck that's shaped like a brick. Genuine real world numbers is something that everybody can appreciate. And for the folks who know how to squeeze a little bit extra, well, you can use your imagination. Today, it's in the mid 60s, which is really nice for late November. Now that's the good news. The bad news is it's very windy. Typically when it's windy like today, I don't do road tests. But here in Kansas, this time of the year, it's gonna be a bit windy. So let's just see what happens. Today, we're going to be using the smaller test route, and that's because we have winds blowing out of the north between 15 and 25 miles per hour. This smaller route will put the truck into the headwind when we travel in this direction, and we'll get a nice tailwind when we go in this direction. It'll be interesting to see how the wind affects the truck and the fuel economy. Anyway, we're going to be doing four laps on this route, and that'll get us close to the 40 mile target. Okay, let's get rolling. The other day I took the truck out for an extended ride just to make sure everything was sort of fixed. And the truck drove fine. It's a bit stinky and the reason for that is I have a few open holes between the engine compartment and the cabin. Obviously I need to deal with that but I haven't done so yet. The engine is stone cold and I'm going to let it warm up as I drive. 
By the time I get to the end of the street, the engine should have warm oil flowing through its cast iron veins. As I mentioned before, today it's going to be a bit windy here in the Thousand Acre Woods, and this will be the first time I've driven this contraption in less than ideal conditions. Now, regardless of the wind, this truck drives fine around town, and the wind seems to not have any effect. However, out on the open roads, the wind's certainly going to have an effect. Now, Eric, the part-time cameraman, has a lot of confidence in this truck, and he speculated that it will get a solid 45 miles to the U.S. gallon. That would be impressive. Now honestly, I have no idea what to expect. However, I feel like if we got 38 miles to the gallon, that would make more sense. It's definitely a tough call. If you folks want to, then go ahead and place your guesses in the comment section. It'll be interesting to read what your expectations are. On this part of the route, we have to obey the in-town speed limit of 35 miles per hour. Once we get past this area, I can accelerate the truck up to speed. Okay, we're about here on the map and we're going in this direction. The wind is gusting from 15 to 25 miles per hour in this direction, so we're traveling directly into the wind. I can definitely tell the little engine's not happy pushing this brick right into the wind. Yep, she's not happy. With only 54 horsepower on a tap, we just don't have enough power to drive into the wind. But we're moving forward, which is the ultimate goal. Just so we're all on the same page, I'm driving the truck like I would normally do and I'm not doing anything different to help improve the fuel economy. I'm just driving and enjoying the scenery. Now back in 1984 and 1985, the Chevy S10 was offered with a 2.2 liter Isuzu diesel engine that made a whopping 63 horsepower and 96 pounds feet of torque. The Isuzu diesel engine had about 10 more horsepower and 20 more torques. Now, according to fueleconomy.gov, the 1985 diesel S10 got 26 miles per gallon city and 30 miles per gallon highway, with a combined average of 27 miles to the U.S. gallon. As far as S10s go, the diesel was the fuel economy leader back in the day. Also keep in mind that diesel fuel was cheaper than gasoline back then. So not only could a diesel S10 go further on a gallon of fuel, it did it with less expensive fuel. Times have changed, and at least here in the States, diesel fuel is more expensive than gasoline. Locally, you can get a gallon of cheap gas for $2.80, and a gallon of diesel will run you $3.54. So that's a 23% difference in the cost. I did check, and for most of Europe, with a few exceptions, diesel is more expensive than gasoline. However, they also use metric money and metric measurements. Now, according to the internet, Germany, the country that invented the diesel engine, well, diesel is actually cheaper than gasoline. And for gasoline, you can expect to pay 1.67 euro per liter and diesel is 1.64 euro per liter. So diesel is actually cheaper in Deutschland. Meh, those numbers make no sense to an American such as myself. So if I do a sloppy American translation, a US gallon of gasoline in Germany will cost you $7.33 and a US gallon of diesel fuel will run you $7.19. That works out to be a 2% difference in favor of the diesel. Now, in my defense, I used internet data, internet translators, and internet math. I have no idea if that information is accurate. Anyway, to dig a hole even deeper with my ignorance, in the United Kingdom, there appears to be a 7% difference with diesel fuel being more expensive than gasoline. And again, I have no idea if that's true. So here in the States, I definitely know that diesel is more expensive than gasoline because I have a picture of it. See? All right, let's change the subject. So this 1989 Chevy S10 was originally equipped with a 2.5 liter gasoline engine and of course a 5 speed manual transmission. And according to fueleconomy.gov, this truck should have gotten 20 city and 24 highway with a combined average of 22 miles per US gallon. If we were to compare the combined average of the gasoline version of this truck with the diesel version, well, the gasoline truck got 22 miles per gallon and the diesel got 27 miles per gallon. I'm not sure, but I think back in 1989, diesel fuel was still cheaper than gasoline here in the States. So the bottom line is, if you were cheap and you didn't have to go any place quickly, then the diesel option was definitely the right choice. Now, when I had the engine out of the truck last week, I went ahead and fine-tuned the injector pump timing. 
The number I settled with was 0.95 millimeter, which is an upgrade from the 0.90 millimeter I was previously running. So for the folks who are not familiar with setting the timing on the VE pumps used on this engine, going from 0.90 to 0.95 is advancing the injector pump timing. At 0.95, the engine should be a bit more spicy, at least that's the theory. Anyway, I'm very familiar with setting the timing and I've done it a dozen or so times in the past. This time around, something went wrong and I'm not sure what. Long story short, the timing felt as though it was late. You know, I can't say the R word on YouTube even though it's a legitimate engineering word. So, on this engine, if the timing's too far advanced or too late, you'll experience hard starting. Unfortunately, the way the engine fits into the truck, it's extremely difficult to check and reset the injector pump timing. And that's because the pump is hard to reach, plus I have to disassemble the cooling system and remove the crankshaft pulley in order to install the custom crank pointer. Anyway, I ended up advancing the pump timing manually without special gauges, tools, or whatnot. I sort of did it blind. The only feedback I used was how fast the engine started when it was cold. So the good news is the engine starts quickly, which is nice. But I have no idea what the pump timing is set to. Obviously, I need to go through the time-consuming procedure at some point. However, today, we may or may not be in spec. Okay, that was one lap on our test route, and I need to do three more laps, but let's go ahead and just fast forward to the results. Well, it's hard to say if the wind had any effect on today's results. We had a strong headwind, but we also had a strong tailwind. Anyway, after four laps around the cornfields, we accumulated a total of 38.7 miles traveled. The engine consumed 1.19 U.S. gallons of diesel fuel, and that calculates to 32.5 miles to the U.S. gallon. So, 32.5 miles to the U.S. gallon is a bit less than I expected. However, it's better than the Isuzu diesel-powered Chevy S10 got back in the day. I'm curious, did this truck perform as some of you expected? If not, no worries, I think we can do better. Well, I'm happy with the results, and I'll tell you why. This is real data that I can use. Yeah, it's a bit disappointing, but keep in mind, I don't have a clue as to where the injector pump timing set, so there may actually be some room for improvement with just a few tweaks. My driving style was genuine, and it was based on ignorance, and that's not a bad thing. I drove this truck like most people would have, and today's results are what the average driver would get. Honestly, I think a more powerful diesel engine would have gotten a bit better. The engine that we are using may be a bit too small for this application, but it's perfect for our experiments right now. Now here's something interesting. This is a dyno chart that I gleaned from the internet. It's for a stock 1.6 liter normally aspirated Volkswagen diesel engine. The horsepower is in the red and the torque is in the blue. This engine makes approximately 54 horsepower at 4800 RPM and 73 pounds feet of torque at around 2200 RPM. Now for the most part, the torque remains flat from 1500 RPM to about 3500 RPM. The difference is only about 3 or 4 foot pounds throughout that range, which is interesting. Over here where the engine is developing peak torque, well, if you follow the line down, we can see that the engine's only generating 27 horsepower. Now, for serious power, we need to run the engine between 3,000 and 4,000 RPM. Yeah, we get a few more ponies after 4,000, but it's not really worth the effort to go beyond 4,000. So at around 2200 RPM, this engine makes peak torque, but only 27 horsepower. Now on a good day, 27 horsepower may be enough to get this truck down the road. It's hard to say. However, when you factor in the wind of any kind into the equation, well, all bets are off. My point is, when I was driving this into the headwind, I think I may have shifted into fifth gear way too soon, and that's why the truck struggled to pick up speed. It turns out with this engine, there just isn't enough horsepower to short shift it, and I need to stay in fourth gear a bit longer while accelerating. Diesel engines, well, they always sound like they're moments away from exploding, and that's just the nature of the beast. I think I need to install a tachometer because I just don't have a feel for the sound this engine makes. You see, a tachometer will help me learn where the best shift points are. Now, I reckon most of you folks would say, just listen to the engine. Well, I would definitely agree with you. However, keep in mind I'm partially deaf and all the noise goes through one ear. 
For me, well, I think a visual aid such as a tachometer will help me hear the engine. That may sound weird, but unless you have hearing loss, it's hard to explain. Anyway, I do have a tachometer on its way, along with some other stuff for future experiments. Now, of course, a turbo is also in the near future, but before we go down that road, I want to try a few things, and I want to make sure this engine's running as best as it can before we add boost to the equation. Well, it's actually been a short week for me due to the Thanksgiving holiday. I hope everybody stateside and deployed had a great Thanksgiving, and we'll see you next time. Until then.